We are recording. All right, let's call this committee meeting of October 16th of the City's Finance Committee to order. And we'll start with the financial report. Okay. Um, so we have a light packet on our, our normal stuff because we have a big agenda to talk about the budget and some things that are coming forward in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully we don't need to spend too much time on the sales tax report and fund reports, but let's review them. Sales tax report, uh, you can say, you can see that year to date, the year over year change, we have actually, uh, we jump back up, been positive 9.6% from year over year change, which is really great. And um, we're about 20% over our budgeted value. Again, really great uh, from a sales tax side. And if you recall last month, we were 0% growth uh, year over year change. So it's good to see some sales tax revenue be positive again for growth rates. On the REIT side, uh, this month we actually had a dip in our REIT year over year projection. We had a big one though, the prior year. That's why we're still yeah. we're right. still right. better <coughs> better than budget. It's just that we right. were back of the big month we had. Right, and, and REIT again is that interesting one where you can say that year to year we're down twenty percent, but compared to our budget we're up thirty four percent. So we did a good job on the budgeting side to be conservative, and so there's not going to be a budgetary impact. Um, but when we measure it against what the actuals are bringing in, it's actually less than the prior year, year to date. But is it 21%? Is it calculating the three remaining months we haven't collected yet? No, no, it, it should be through September. Yeah, we had those, that $250,000 a month and that we had the uh, part of that big apartment right. complex sell and then we had the shopping center sell that were those two big drivers in 20. Good. So. 17. Uh, but again, overall for the biennial period, we're be, uh, over our good. budget, so it's yeah. still good. Yeah, yeah. Looks good. And that rolls all into our fund balances here. Again, see at this point, um, you'll see a lot more fund balance as we move into the budget discussion, kind of what we're anticipating. And um, the next spreadsheet is actually where we can talk about this now because this will this will tie into the budget as well. Are you okay, Beck? No, I'm not. I, um, mm -hmm. If I have to leave, I will. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, if you guys recall, last couple meetings I talked about how we have impact fee funds and REIT funds coming in, and these balances look really healthy except for the fact that we know that there are expenses that we're budgeting for in our project budgets, and I'm calling them obligated. We're obligating dollars out of these funds to be used for these future anticipated expenses of these capital projects. So we talked about, I wanted to show, display this to you guys so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. Sorry, back, I'm right here. This one here. This I'm one. looking for it. Did you not get a copy in your packet? It was right under this page here. You got shorter. Okay. You got shorter yeah. one. Okay, take take this one. And I might have yep. Here, take this. Okay, thank you. So one is the REIT uh, analysis, and one's the impact fund. So we'll look at the REIT balance first. Again, what I want to walk through is uh, starting begin 2017 beginning fund balance. You see how much revenue we recorded, what we ended in 2017. You see what we've recorded through September of 2018 here at REIT received. Uh, we have other revenues. And then we have what's currently in the budget for 2018 that we expect to uh, reduce our REIT balance. We have identified here in purple what we are budgeting for in 2019. Okay. And then we have the red section, which I'm calling obligated. Again, what I'm trying to do is identify all the possible expenditures that are going to touch these funds over the next two years. Um, and you can see the big one, Tremont possible overages of roughly $500,000. So when you take all these into consideration, uh, year-to-date actuals with 2018 remaining budget, what we're budgeting for 2019, and then what we're obligating for, for these big Tremont uh, anticipated expenses, it leaves us with ending, this says 18, yeah. This should probably be 19. Uh, estimate ending balances as of 19 of 56,000 for REIT 1, REIT 2, and so a total fund balance of 113,000. So should there be additional revenue in uh, here for the fourth quarter? Yes. Well, depends on how you want to handle it. 
Um, we're not forecasting revenue in here. I just point out, I want to take a worst case scenario. No new revenue, what's the expense is gonna hit my fund as far as a cash position? So with our new revenue, we could pay these expenses off with no new revenue and end with a $113,000 fund balance. Right. So that's good. And But, but we haven't fully funded what the contractor claims either. That's right. the so other part you, of so the So you're, you're right, we'll get another right. half a million dollars, but so that's, that's the anticipated yeah. yes. revenues, another half a million? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I could and build that's just for the fourth quarter of 18? Right. This no, no. Is, yeah. For no, for the next next year, we're getting. So the revenues recorded in here are, are year to date. So those are our actual revenues, and I haven't put forecasted revenues in here uh, for nineteen and twenty. Okay, but you've no, got no, no. an expenditure in nineteen. Correct. A couple I'm, expenditures. Yes, I'm putting in what we're budgeting. But we don't have the revenue Correct. that you anticipate. Okay. Correct. Let me back up. So instead of putting anticipated revenues for nineteen in here, what about fourth quarter eighteen? Uh, we're in the fourth quarter. So these are through September. So we're current. Right. But, but you're still anticipating quarter. more revenue yeah. coming in yeah. this See, last two, quarter. Yeah. About 200. Yeah. It's 600 it's and 650 two, annually yeah. is the number. Yeah, that's right. And so we should get about 200 more by the end of the year. And if I put that in there. Yeah, I would do. Well, the, the whole well, purpose of this is, again, to the, the whole exercise was we know we have this funding shortfall coming with Tremont mm -hmm. of nearly $3 million. How can I cover this? Mm -hmm. I want to deplete my current funds that are available with cash available. This is an ultra conservative approach to yes, life. It is. Yes, yes, it is. What we is know we have enough money to meet what you've got projected as obligations short of, short of whatever the, the contractor convinces standing. you yeah. is legit. Yeah. yeah. What's the two numbers that offset each other from a Cormac Woods part? Uh, what were you looking at? part phase two, two I see it I don't we'll see one offset oh it was originally well, but uh, so this was originally budgeted uh, from McCormick phase park and then we uh, realigned that with bond proceeds so that was all part of that transaction mm -hmm. okay okay <coughs> so yes this is a conservative approach um, however the the one piece that isn't factored in here is I can only get us up to a two million dollar gap and if it's a three million dollar gap I'm still short a million and that's where Rob's saying, yeah, well, what if we get half a million dollars each year in the next two years? And I go, okay, then you get there. But do you really want to put that in here? Yeah. I'm going to need cash. I'm going to need a right check. I need to know what my fund balance is. And I know what my shortage is, possibly a million. And if they draw a line in the sand and we're heading down a, a legal path, time's our friend because we'll collect money. It to be Except able to for pay. what we spend on attorneys during right. that time. I was just saying... Sure. You know, mm -hmm. if we're going to estimate a 2018 year end balance, shouldn't we try to project fourth quarter it's revenues? It's 200,000. The number's 200,000. We could, we could certainly put in fourth quarter revenues. I could certainly put in a 19 and 20 revenues. And if I'm going to do that, I should certainly put in the million dollar uh, yeah. outstanding. It, yeah, if we wanted to go down all the way through yeah. 19, I think, but if you just want to end yeah. at 18, then I just think in all inequity, we should probably forecast we, 18 we, revenues. We have no official word. Right, so I'm careful here. Right, and, and but, so that's, yeah. That, on that delta, mm -hmm. we don't have anything to support that. Right. It's, we, this is what we, Understood. so we're trying, we don't want to put a number in here that shows that right. we have it. Right. Okay. Yeah, and if you go back to um, the REIT sales tax presentation here, um, you know, we're trying to track this monthly, so I could, I could put in what we've budgeted, but you know, this last month we were down thirteen thousand. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of letting the revenue play itself out. Yeah, so it's really a, it'd, it'd be the budgeted play. number, right. which is the two hundred. Right. If if we were going to plug something in. Yeah. Or even if you wanted to forecast conservative and say, look at this twelve percent decline is going to continue, you could take ten percent off or something and have it be one eighty instead of two. Yeah. We we could we approach this number of ways. Happy to do it. I just want to use something that we can start talking about. Okay, and it's more it's more informational to, to yeah. show yeah. you. Long this is a snapshot as of what we know today. Yep. Yes. Yep. yes, that's fine. So yeah. yep, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's I'm fine. I'm fine with um, the way it is. As yeah. long as you get your eyes on the bigger picture, that's yeah. great. Yeah, and the point was, you know, when we rolled these out, it looks like we got 2.4, and I'm going, yeah, we really got 115,000 plus the fourth mm -hmm. quarter coming in. Mm -hmm. right. and, and this is really laying the foundation for the 
budget talks because I don't want everybody to think there's no right. saying right. Well, we, lots of money we got here. lots of money what's yeah. the problem why aren't we doing these other things yeah. and right we we don't have a lots of money it, we've got a lot of commitments to projects that we've started and yep. we need to finish those projects right. so, and this yep. is how we're going to pay for them yep. so that, that okay. kind of gives you a snapshot of the REIT fund the next uh, one is the impact fees and so from left to right here uh, we show the McCormick transportation impact fee revenue that we uh, collect and record the parks impact fee the McCormick Woods Park impact fee money the Bayside plot SEPA money and then our general transportation impact fee funds so again same exercise going through 2017, 2018 budgeted. Uh, purple is what we are budgeting for in 2019 and obligating. And again, we're trying to get to where are we going to close with these park impact fee funds. Now some of these will, we will actually not get new revenue. Mm -hmm. So the base side impact fee, once we close this project out, we're closing this fund. Yeah, it's done. Um, the McCormick Woods park impact fee, very similar. We're going to close that out this year. Uh, that's done. The McCormick transportation impact fee can only be used for McCormick Woods transportation projects. So we've right. identified which projects we can use that for. Yep. Okay. And then lastly, the transportation impact fee, uh, column to left, you know, it's our general. And you'll note that the last expenditure that we're obligating is the other $500,000. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the $3 million that we talked about for uh, Tremont, we got a million we say is in this contingency. We've just identified a million in the REIT and the impact fees that we're obligating. And there's a million dollars out there that I have yet to identify. Yep. Okay. And you're seeing a $17,900 balance in the parks. You're about what we learned today, which you'll learn, you'll learn this evening is that even the value engineered project is $22,000 short. Uh, so which the, park? The, the Rockwell pocket park. Okay. We're just a little bit, sh that we're, the first, the ninety percent design was two sixty. We value engineered it down to two twenty something, and two two twenty two, which we're, so we're uh, we're a little bit we're a little bit short. Those that hasn't gone out to bid, and and that's that's the recommendation tonight is going to be let's take this to bid and find out what the real number yeah, is. Yes, because when I looked at it, I thought everything has been coming in so significantly higher. Yeah. that we need to know we need to know yeah. and yeah. we this particular one that I think if the contractor that's doing the pathway down there well, he'll probably done, do it he's he's done a, he's the expensive part of these walls um, but he's done a lot of the site prep he he's down there on a mobile you know he's mobilized here right and he's doing McCormick Woods correct so we might Putting out to bid right away and, and awarding it in January could be our friend, and it, we could find out we've got to back away from this. So uh, it's, it's an engineer's pursuing. estimate. Yeah, it's worth pursuing. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So again, these two are to help give us some perspective about where we really think our fund balances are, um, because some of these activities aren't hitting our books. They're yeah. they're kind of anticipated, and we're just preparing and planning. So we don't have a whole lot of money left over there. We don't. We really, I've said this the last couple of we've really exhausted all the available resources. The tree monster are looking nice. <laughs> <laughs> From what I've seen of it, it looks nice. We're in sidewalks later this week, and yeah. the first ring is on the So we're going to end roundabout. up with $20,000. Is right. that the way I'm reading this? Yeah. 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 And again, we'll get some park impact fee money, but it's not a whole lot. It's maybe eight thousand a month, so it's not a huge. Another four months. So revenue generator. Mm -hmm. um, this is through August, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a huge revenue generator, but there is some. There's a little bit of money, and we're a little bit short. We think, you know. Right. Yep. But overall, if we look at the actual financial condition, we got healthy funds as far as cash positions. Now it's these kind of capital projects. And anticipate expenses coming down the road okay, that so we're preparing for. I'm being real slow here. Um, that transportation column. The f one far right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, um, we're we're holding. We're obligating a half a million half dollars. A, we're yeah, we're, I'm we're sorry. At the very we're squirreling a half a million away. Yeah, we're squirreling a half 
million away. So we're not doing any street regular street maintenance. We're doing three point six million dollars worth of street maintenance. Well, but we're just not I don't, paving. I don't yeah. want to talk about Tremont. I mean the yeah. things that um, outside of Tremont we're doing three point six million dollars. We outside mean. of Tremont. Yeah, yes. so we'll come, we'll come, hold yeah, that. That's a good question. That's, we'll hold that's a good okay. question if it's part of the budget presentation. Yeah. Okay. But these are capital dollars for capital projects. Okay. So different than maintenance. Okay. Yeah, different okay. pot of dollars. Okay. Um, so we can look at the Tremont spreadsheet if you guys are ready to move on. Or if you have any questions on any of the funds. Just, uh, you know, our goal of uh, auditors wanting us to have certain amount of funds in reserve that we're still making headway on that. Yeah. 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 And, and part, and of the, yeah. part of the yep. expectation. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> that's, that's part of where our cash is going. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I apologize I haven't had a chance actually to look this over too closely because I know work was slowing down here in October, but um, it looks like year to date we spent $9.9 .9 million. And we're expecting this project to be done in what, in June, I believe? June yeah. 2019 is when we're uh, expecting the work to be done. So with this weather, they can keep yeah. doing work, which is great. Um, is it odd at all that you know we keep hearing everything's on time and on budget, yet we're five million dollars behind in expenditures? <laughs> well, we had a month of no work, and it's gonna it's gonna. We keep well, saying that. Here, here's part of our challenge: is um, our consultants don't update this as frequently as finance would like them to. We can get the actuals and record that and go. Here's what the plan was. Can you update us on the plan? Right. And, and they just don't get back to us as timely. Right. I drive the project three times a week no, and I see the process of progress. Yeah, it just it continues. Yeah. I just thought, you know, when we were back here and we saw it, I was like, oh, we're going to catch up. We're going to just like, <laughs> but yeah, we're on time and on schedule and on budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You get some change orders coming next council meeting. I was going to say, we're significantly under. That's yeah. what I mean. Five million bucks. Yeah, five million bucks. That's not the real story. Right. Right. I, I know that. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any specific comments about Tremont. And yeah, uh, Heidi and Heidi and Mike are probably the in in the details of this stuff. Um, yeah. No one. I. Yeah. Yeah. Pay the bills as they come in. Yeah. My so paper looks used, great. We've used all of our bonds. Yeah, remember we we had a spend down requirement, so we spent right. some so of it on the McCormick Village Park. Park. Correct. And and we're going to take that back from Reed. Right. Anything specifically you have questions on? Looks like we tapped the utility a little harder than we thought. We have. We've been tapping the sewer utility a lot harder than we thought. Remember we had that force main issue. And we think um, that some of these outstanding expenses that we haven't got clarity on yet are going to hit the utility again. Um, so we're kind of watching that, monitoring that. And waiting for some actual numbers yeah. and descriptions to come forward. What's the discrepancy between the bond proceeds spend down, which is shown now 2.151? Yep, so that number versus this number, which is titled bond cash balance. Um, 
Um, let me look into that and get back to you without seeing where it's all linked up. It's hard for me to answer. I mean, the, this, this box down here was our target and goals where we needed to be. And this is supposed to be reflecting how we've been billing against it, but it can't go negative. Right. Okay. Um, and that just might be that height hasn't got to, because we've been working on the budget, we haven't been spending as much time for this for September and October, right. doing the grants and getting this all caught up. So once we complete kind of some of this, we'll go back to this. Um, so I just maybe a billing within this Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Okay, so this next section, uh, three, three or four, we're gonna talk about the biennial budget. Um, so tonight we're gonna have a presentation and discussion tee this up for the full council. We're gonna give everybody books. Um, here's the mayor's preliminary budget. And then we got our meetings on 19th with departments to talk about it more in detail. Um, so I wanted to give you guys a chance to really go through in detail to have you guys prepared to answer and questions. And there's a lot to, to talk about on Friday, so we've scheduled it a half a day. I think we're gonna get through them. Other than public works, we planned them an hour for them. Everybody else is gonna be 30 minutes at a pop. We, and we should be able to, to get through them because there, 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 there aren't a lot of decisions to be able to, to, right. to make because we're funding the commitments right. we've already made. Right. So before we jump to that, because that will be a longer discussion, I'd like to see if I could get you guys just to uh, skip ahead to numbers four and five. We'll have four and five relate to a couple of things that we've been working on a couple of months with the finance committee. Uh, one is uh, separating the enterprise fund. So currently, again, we have the 401 that contains our water sewer, mm -hmm. um, all our GLs, and at the finance committee's direction and the council support, uh, we have gone through the exercise now to separate that. And so you'll see a budget that actually <coughs> has this proposed to be separated. So tonight I'm going to walk through this. I want to make sure you guys are comfortable. Um, do this tonight or, or I'm do, doing this doing the enterprise tonight, ERR tonight, and then the budget tonight. Okay, you are. Okay. Yep, we got them all on tonight. Okay. So and these are all things that we've talked about. So I wanted to remind you guys. Um, so uh, again, enterprise funds. Uh, we met. You guys requested we split this up into multiple funds. Again, this is achieving our goals for transparency. Uh, really have a financial sustainability plan as well as aiding us in our capital planning. Um, so we reviewed the new structure we bought in the last meeting. And so this is a nice little pretty chart. Nice colors. <laughs> it's a nice chart of what it's going to look like. Um, so you will have, in our enterprise funds, you'll have an operational fund, you'll have a stabilization fund, you'll have a capital construction fund, and a debt service fund. So for each enterprise activity, you'll have four different funds to support and describe that. We put in here what the current state looks like, so everybody is kind of aware what kind of looks like. We have don't water on that. Well, no, because we don't really like the current states. A little hard to follow. We have water sewer utility fund that includes operations, cable, capital, debt service, stabilization. We have the cumulative reserve for water sewer. We have storm utility drainage and cumulative reserve. So that's is kind of the model we want to go to. This is the before, and so this is the after, and this is what it will look like in the budget. Um, going forward, water will have an operation account, calling it 411. Uh, it'll have a stabilization account called 412, and it'll have a capital account 413, and lastly, a debt service account 414. Uh, sewer will also have the same structure. It's going to be 431, 432, 433, and 434. And storm, very similar 421, 22, 23, and 24. Um, so this will really provide some real clear transparency, I think, when you look in the budget documents that, hey, here's my operations, is everything operational. Right. Yep. You'll go to the capital side, you see the projects, you go to debt service, you'll see what's coming up. Great. Um, so I think this achieves the goals that we wanted. I think that we owe this to the citizens, especially when it comes to that storm drain right. utility. Yeah. Uh, we've been collecting for a long time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but it's still a frustration. With no, I know it's a frustration, but at least we can show easier right. this yeah. is where your money is going. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it'll make <coughs> managing reporting a lot easier for us. Yeah. So this will be the presentation tonight. Um, again, everyone's kind of seen this already a couple of times. The council has to everyone bought into it. Let's remind what we're going to do in the budget, and this is what's going to look like. So when we get to the budget, it'll really aid in that conversation. Okay. The other topic tonight, again, really short, uh, equipment rental revolving fund. I wanted to remind everybody where we've come and what left we have to do. So 
uh, we've created an ER fund. Yay, good for us. We established an ordinance. We established a policy. Uh, those are all actions we've taken. Um, next, we need to do a budget amendment to move uh, funds that are currently in these three other funds, 303, 402, and 421, and move that cash now into the fund 500, which is our ER. And if you look on the back side, this is what this uh, budget amendment ordinance will look like next week when I come and bring it forward. Um, I'm going to have the dollars amounts. These three funds are going to be, quote, closed, and we're going to have one new clean fund where all these are going to be recorded and accounted for. So that's where some of the cash went to was established. We fully funded this in the budget. We did take a look at it. The the list of things that should be replaced couldn't be really afforded. And and we, there was business reasons why we probably don't, there's, there was trucks and things that Public Works has, they're, they're gonna be okay. So we punted some things two years and four years so we're not buying 19 vehicles next year. Oh, yeah, that's good. And, uh, <coughs> you'll see we've got a, a very responsible, I think, list. And remember, the policy requires anything that's not just a true replacement has to come to the council. If we, if the one of the requests is a TV truck, and they they're they're wanting us to consider replacing the electrician's utility truck with a box van, um, I don't think that one's going to work. But if we were to do those things, it's not a true replacement. We're getting something else, so you guys have to buy in on that. And so those are on a separate list on here, even though we've put them into the budget, you guys need to pick make a policy decision that it's okay for us to go, you know, there's an administrative vehicle on here. There's, a, there's, th there's things that are in addition to just a replacement and you guys have to weigh in on those things. Okay. Yeah, that was part of the internal controls and the checks and balances right. we wanted to keep you guys involved as we're doing things. So tonight is really about uh, reflecting what we've done. We've uh, created the fund, adopted policies. Now in 2018, we need to move money out of these three, close this, and now we actually have money to start 2019. And then you'll see that we have in the budget right. now payments for rental, for replacement, operations and maintenance, and capital purchases. So that will be part of the budget discussion. I'm bringing next week an ordinance to just do the budget amendment to close these three funds and put some cash into the fund. Yeah. So try and take this very, Steadily, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's really short, yeah. Um, but I think it'll be good. And then now we can turn our attention to the budget discussion. Let's see what we got here. All right. So we will start with. Um, We'll start with the cover page. Make sure that I got all these before I get started. Okay. So tonight when we roll this out and we talk about the budget, um, we're going to focus on the area in yellow, which is the mayor's proposed budget. And these are just highlights. Um, we broke it down by operations, transportation, operations, and maintenance, our capital budget, and then what we're purchasing the ERNR. We highlighted in blue here uh, adjustments that the mayor made. So again, if you guys recall the process, uh, we put out some estimates of what we think the budget is. We request departments to respond to that and uh, allocate those resources. And if they need additional resources, uh, to explain why. And so we call that the department request. So we have the original budget, the department requests, and then the mayor sits down with the department heads and goes through their requests and comes up with what he um, adjusts for the mayor's budget. So we put here in the summary level blue the things that we thought were impactful from a financial standpoint and an operational and management standpoint. There are other adjustments, but they are minor. Um, I don't think you guys would have an interest in talking about, but these I think you would have an interest in talking about. The things under $1,000 we just we didn't include in this. So you're budgeting the rental payments in the operating budget, which will Correct. replenish this fund. Correct. And then on the back side, um, so anything that the department had requested that wasn't funded, we've identified that we could uh, review it as part of the mid-year review to see if we have funding uh, at that time 
to do it, if there's a, a will, desire to do it. So we made a list of, again, the high high dollars, things that are impactful on the back side of the sheet in green that we're putting on our mid-year review list. So come 2019, we'll review where we're at financially. Uh, are there things on this list that we could do, should do? Are there things for consideration? But these are not budgeted at this time. And so these are the things you would have typically seen on the Slim Gyms mm -hmm. for your consideration. Right. And we will bring Friday a list, this list, not necessarily, if, you're, if it's okay with you, not in that Slim Gym, but more detail on these and dollar amounts. So in case you want, you think some of these things, that these are these were requests from the department heads that we said, gosh, we can't afford this yeah, right this, now. This is what if, you pulled out of the budget. Right, and that we'll look at these mid-year biennial review if, reven if revenues come in stronger than we think, we'll definitely consider them. And if you guys may want to consider some of these things, and if you want me to run through them real quick, I mean, the, the, court, the court's still working through a process for their records management system. They have an employee they haven't hired, and they don't plan to hire that employee until they get the quote um, from the company. Uh, one positive, normally the company, where we're at on that right now, is the annual maintenance cost, they have a minimum of $50,000 annually, and the salesperson is working with the CEO. The CEO has to approve any uh, contracts that are less than their minimum contract amount. So we know that it will be no more than $50,000 annually. We're hoping it's more in the thirty-five dollars to $40,000 range annually. And it's comparable to the employee that it would replace. I'm jumping ahead. Do we want to go from the top? Well, I was no. just trying to orient them. So let's, let's, let's go back to the top. Yeah. Let's go to the top. I'm just I'm trying sorry. to get oriented with yeah. the, kind of the summary foundation document, which is mayor's budget, the, the adjustments that are budgeted for in the backside shows those things that we're going to review mid-year. Um, open for discussion, but they are not budgeted. A couple other things. Um, so let's start at the top. Operating budget. When we thought about the operating budget, um, well, here, let me reverse. The way this budget was crafted was really geared towards what came out of the 2018 retreat, which is that we need to focus on the comp plan and complete these capital projects. So this budget was really geared towards our capital projects, finish from what we started, identifying the funding for that, and working from there. So I think that's something we can say is a success is that we're budgeting $20 million in capital projects. We're finishing what we started. It's all part of the comp plan. No new projects are being added till we complete what we started. Um, and it's touching all our different utilities in, in some capacity. So we got investments all in our different avenues. And so we do have the detailed breakdown in the budget, of course. Um, but again, I, I just wrote this up to a high level. So we talk about sewer capital projects, $8.3 million. The water capital project, $6.3 million. Storm drainage. Now, storm drainage, if you recall, what we wanted to do with the storm drainage was finish what we started. And so we got the Annapolis Creek design. So some that's carried over. The other piece of this storm drainage is Tremont. So again, finishing what we started. There are no new capital projects coming out of storm drainage. The plan was, Public Works told us our storm water capital plan is no good. It's old data, old numbers, bad projects. Uh, we really need a new stormwater comp plan to actually budget a capital plan for. And so what we walked away from the retreat was find Public Works, good plan, go work to develop a capital project list that are standalone stormwater projects, identify a list of stormwater projects that are partnering with other projects that are street related so we can have two lists of good projects and do a good comprehensive review of what stormwater looks like for 1920. So that was their assignment. And so we have some CAL projects, but it's really to complete what we've started. And the task is for them to give us a good stormwater comp plan that's been updated. I'm a little frustrated because I think it's just an Excel spreadsheet project. They believe they need a consultant. Um, we funded some money for, I believe, for that consultant. Yes, believe. we did, 30000 And um, Mark says they just don't have the, the capacity to do it and uh, we need we can't deploy the money unless we have a good plan. capital plan so um, if we had more capacity we could do that so in you've house. got that in the operating it's budget in the operating, to do it's in the operating the plan. budget <clears throat> yeah that transportation capital projects is what's in there 
Uh, in the transportation, we have uh, Tremont. Let's see if I have it, the detail. It's where's my book? It's Tremont, and, and it is. Maybe it's a roundabout. Tremont. And the roundabout. The, the roundabout isn't Anderson. in there. We're waiting on the grant. So we ha we've had those funds, hold in, we're holding them on, in, obligated, in, in the obligated column. We're not budgeting them, because if we don't get the grant, we, we can't move forward with it. We get the grant, we'll, do, we'll potentially slide it into this budget process late, or make a budget amendment right okay. out of the gate. We're talking Anderson. Anderson Hill, Hill right? roundabout. Yeah. Okay. The, there is money for, Mark says, with the new person we've hired, it, we've put dollars in for um, for a survey contractor and a geotechnical analysis uh, mm -hmm. con consultant, and what that'll allow us to do is the Sydney in 2018 to design those projects in house for the Sedgwick Sydney overlays and the Lippert overlays. I don't know that we'll get to both of them in 2019. I hope to get to one of them, and they're on the list of the for the mid biennial review. We got to see what. We're, what, how so those Tremont, specs will be developed in nineteen. In, yeah. in nineteen, with in-house. Right. And then we've with put a couple outside help. Correct. And so, if you want to see the complete list, turn on page seventy-seven. You will have the complete list of the capital projects identified. So again, um, this is how we craft the budget. We took what council agreed to at the tree, made a high priority. Um, so no, it is in here. The, the bay side yeah. uh, right of way? Yeah. I think this is a different one. Isn't this the land acquisition that doesn't require the grant? Okay. At one point. This is the grant we already have, I think. Okay. And then there is a grant. There's a, yeah, there's, that's that 150. Have, that's, that's 150. Yeah, that's yeah. the other one. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. on. Yep. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, this 150 is the that's in here is the um, our share of the corridor study. If we can come to a development agreement uh, with the McCormick folks, they would fund 150. We'll fund 150, and the school district will 150, and we will do what we did in, on the Bethel corridor for um, for Old Clifton Road. Okay. But that's subject. We're we're putting it in the budget into for 2020, and it's subject to us coming to an agreement with the developer for the right and the school board, board and the school, and school bond, bond passing yeah. Yep. yeah so there's some variables uh, to that yeah then that um, the land for the Bay Street pedestrian path is that the rest of the property is mm -hmm. going out and that's yeah. in addition to the um, um, money we got out of PSRC that is the PSRC money. that is the PSRC money it's actually it's the connecting Washington. No, you're right. It's the PSRC money. The connecting Ma Washington money pay, pays for the construction. This is the PSRC money. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's going to be enough. It's not. Yeah. But yeah. it will spend this and this biennium. Right. And the next biennium, we're going to need to your right. Yeah. To put some more dollars. To and that. I don't think we can ask for more money for that. Yeah. Not from that source. That, we can correct. Go, we can put it in Brianna's lap potentially in two years. Um, Mark believes we've got enough to buy all the houses but one, and we've got one that doesn't want to sell. So we buy the ones that do want to sell and design potentially around that the, one. The we, we, that's the one area where we can we can shift into the corner when we buy a garage on the other side and you know we, yeah. we could leave that one house yeah. if we have to. Yeah. Probably jumping way ahead of myself, but I don't want to forget it. Does this budget anticipate that vehicle tabs going from 20 to 40? No. It does not. No. Because we even need to take action. Yeah, we didn't do that, did we? No, we didn't. No, okay. no we didn't. I'm just. Yeah. Did I miss a meeting? No. no. Okay. We could. That would help. Uh, just <coughs> just ask the question. No, yep. no. No, it does not. Um, so, again, that we would get, take your guys' action. Yeah. 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 So, I thought this was successful because, again, well, we, we've been here in Public Works, we're resourced, we're strapped on cash, let's finish what we started, these are major projects, and $20 million, $20 million is a lot in capital projects, as you know, uh, and you know we're really concerned about the change orders and costs going up, so, yep. close on that. So um, the only thing we've got 
that's potential, potentially new that isn't in here already is the, well, it, the, the pocket parks in here at the current funding level, we're, as you, you heard tonight, we're gonna recommend to go, just go out to bid and see what the number really is. And then the Anderson Hill Roundabout, if we get a, a large grant, that changes the landscape. When does TIB, about, they meet in October, now. don't yeah, they? Yeah, now. It's soon. Yeah. Like I said, we might be able to amend this if before, it's, before it's in print. <laughs> before it's, yeah, before it's adopted, yeah. but we, we don't know. So again, on this, you, you have the highlights. Um, we kind of touched on a little bit as far as what we got planned to purchase vehicles. Um, you know, five hundred five hundred thousand dollars from the ER. We talked about the employees in the in the mayor's budget adjustments here. The full time officer downstairs, uh, the part time parks, the um, full time office admin. They're all identified. Much back up there, just a little bit. Up. There's a new rec. The oh the police have a fairly expensive. Um, a software system that uh, is being updated at the county. It's what they have to use to when they pull you over to look up stuff. Uh, a chief can explain that much more eloquently on Friday, but it's it's a fairly. You know, we're using criminal justice Correct. money primarily to pay for that, but it is it's a hundred thousand dollar purchase. Yeah, it's expensive. That's a record spending. Yeah, it's very expensive. I want to go well, back very, to. Mm -hmm. um, this 506,000, that's mm -hmm. coming out of the million dollars we're putting in there. Correct. Or is this additional money? Um, it's coming out of the a and in our fund. Yes, it's coming out of, I'm just trying to think how they. Out of the whole, yeah, nine. yeah. I don't know if I'd focus on the million nine per se. So remember the e &R, we evaluated our fleet. And we said right. we have $5 million of assets that are going into this fund. But when we take into depreciation, we actually need $3 million of cash, $2 million of assets. We've accounted for a million here, and now we need the other $2 million. The other $2 million are accounted for in this budget, okay? Um, which we can talk about once we get to the fund summary, because I think okay. this will make more sense. Yeah, okay. But from a simplistic standpoint, I went tied those exact dollars to the five six five six because those dollars will be earmarked for those purposes there. The 506, um, we will use the dollars we have available for these specific and That's just really vehicles. a beginning fund balance. Yeah, yeah. So the one million nine is a rolled up number, for example, and we might have, say, $50,000 in the Public Works water fund account. Well, they are asking for 78000 So part of the rental replacement is in this budget is going to help fund the rental replacement account, which we'll purchase out of uh, in the, and let's look at the UNR budget too. Let's, let's practice looking at this. Okay. Maybe that'll help. Give me a page. Uh, we have the E oh, on the back. Right in the back. Yep, right next to the Capitol. Um, so the way we set up this preliminary budget, we've got all the department operational stuff up front. We roll into uh, the service, Capitol, E and R on the back. And the other thing I want you, you guys to make sure you guys are following we'll, is, yeah. we'll is get, the we'll fund get that one. Yeah, we'll get that in a minute. Okay. okay. So back, you can see here at the top, uh, we have a summary of revenue expenses. If, for example, next week when I bring forward the ordinance and council approves it, that I may close the three funds, move the million nine, we'll begin 2019 with million nine, three, three, three in the fund. I'm anticipating um, revenues coming in of 2.6, expenses of 761,000, which are both capital replacement and operations and maintenance. So my end funding fund balance. Okay, so you can see that all the way across. Now below here we've broken down um, how much is operation and maintenance payments on the revenue front, which is this next table, and then on the back page we have the expense side. What are we purchasing? What are we paying for? Previously we were paying for all of those vehicle maintenance repairs General. in various in the various funds departmental budgets. Now we're consolidating all this, and it's the same expenses. We're just capturing them in a different place. Well, you aren't seeing this book, and perhaps we'll do it for the final, because um, I'm seeing it now. I don't know if it's useful or not, but in our accounting software system, we will have a beginning fund balance for each of the categories and an ending fund balance for each of the categories. So police will have its own beginning fund balance, public works beginning fund balance, uh, CDD, 
every department that has an asset or vehicle has its own beginning and ending fund balance. And as the revenues come in, it goes into that fund, expenses going out of their fund, so it's completely accounted for all the way through the process. Okay. So I don't see that table here, but um, if you think it's useful, we can have that in the final budget. And remember, we lost two vehicle lease cars this last year. So normally we would buy three and three. Um, Chief says he's comfortable with seven, so it's going to be four and three. And you know we've got some insurance proceeds that we're bringing into this fund uh, to help with those police vehicles purchases. Yep. Yeah, that's important. Uh, so we'll, that will either be part of the budget um, or a budget amendment once we receive those insurance proceeds to move those into the fund for the police fleet, vehicle fleet. We, we, we've got some really tired public works trucks that uh, you know more than 15 years old high miles and so see them driving around yeah or not I've yeah. ridden some of them and I'm going we're going down the road in this thing we've got two uh, dodges up there right now we're cannibalizing one uh, to get the other one on the road um, so it's, yeah, I, I don't that's what Tony asked me I said if that's a good use of the mechanics time go for it because we're realistically we you know, adopt this. We got to order them on the state contract. It'll be spring by the time these trucks arrive, and they've got work to do. And you know, so the, these these trucks are sorely needed. Yep. The other Get thing I want something to surplus and sell. Yes. <coughs> the other thing I really wanted to highlight with the ERNR is uh, we're relying heavily on the Criminal Justice Fund 103. Uh, currently, we have really healthy balances in that fund, and. The city's practice has been to purchase vehicles out of that fund. So keeping with the practice, we are trying to address the replacement payment value, the total, by relying on criminal justice and moving a lot of that cash from criminal justice fund to the ENR for police vehicles. So you'll see for the criminal justice fund, I'm budgeting $500,000 of that fund balance to move from 103 to 500 for police. Okay. That's an important point because when we look at our fleet, um, you know, you really got two categories, public works and police. So right. police is the big burden. Yeah. So the more burden I can get off the general fund um, helps the general fund. Mm -hmm. So you'll see when we come to this um, fund summary, when we look at 103, you'll see the big drop in fund balance. Yeah. We don't really need to have a big fund balance in the criminal justice fund. Uh, it's not an operational fund. We use it for purchasing tasers and uh, vehicles. Um, the other thing that's coming out of the criminal justice fund is the Chief's proposal for the replacement system that we just talked about, the recording system. The uh, records management system. Thank you, the records management system, um, which I thought, again, made sense since True. we had fund balance available there. So I wanted to point that out because that's a big dollar coming out uh, to address the, the whole police issue. Um, and this breaks it down, shows from each of the funds how much is coming out for which. Yes, and we're showing it into the, we're showing it as revenue into revenue. the ER because it is. Yeah. It's right. an expense on the other side, it's revenue here. So I'm trying to make sure we're clear about it, transparent, but I don't want to overkill everybody with all the different transactions, you know, right, twist it up. Yeah, I think it's just nicely done yeah. here. Okay. And then we have, uh, I don't know if I, did I show you guys this? Page, page 81 is the, so since we're on ER, um, again, we're, we're trying to roll this out as a program. Right, we've, ad we've adopted these policy things, uh, the ordinances to establish it, we're moving funds into the fund to fund it. We have a proposed budget that would fund the gap in replacement value and fully fund it. Still up to discussion, but that's what we've done here. And now what we've done from a program level is we identified from our current fleet what was um, the three metrics we have, our useful life, mileage, and there's hours on equipment. So we identified which vehicles hit one of our metrics, and for this time it was really useful life because we're just going to fleet. So we pulled up the list of all our vehicles that are beyond their useful life, and we summarized that. And that's what we've been talking about the last couple of months. Before I even showed you any of these numbers, we've been talking about $1.6 million of capital purchases coming up. And that's what we were planning for. So we rolled that out, said here's our list of vehicles. We rolled this list to the different departments, heads, who it touches, and requested their feedback on the condition of the vehicle, um, whether they want to replace it this year, whether it needs to be removed from the fleet, or if they want any change in status, you know, they want to go from a truck to a van. Give us some feedback about this vehicle. It's up, it's useful life, it's at its end. 
We received those feedback from departments and made the adjustments in the program. So that's what you see before you today is we took the feedback from the department heads about their, their vehicles. Um, some decided to remove a vehicle from fleet. Some said this can wait two years. It's actually in really good condition, Noah. Uh, we can get through another biennium, no problem. So we program we have programmed that into our ENR program, and the result is this is the list that we have par pared down now. We started with a list of probably like 25 vehicles, I'd say, and we're down to uh, five for police with two, so a total of seven. The two are for replacing the vehicles that crashed. Those weren't a part of our ENR per se because they were brand new vehicles that weren't useful life, but um, still need to be replaced. And then we have four public works trucks. So the useful life was determined based on age, miles, and director's input? Uh, the useful life was based on um, the year purchased and our current year. So most of the vehicles on the list were 96, 2000, they were 20 years old. So it was just and age? It was just aged. It was just aged out. And they've got yep. the mileage with that well, age. I, I know, so, so we started, yeah, the answer question, we started with the age the metric. directors yeah. Yeah. had some input to say yeah. this yeah. one should look better. in the kitchen? She's got something for you to say. Well, there's four vehicles that um, aren't on this list that we'll talk about further in the, in the budget process. And part of it is Public Works needs to get us some good numbers. I wasn't comfortable putting them into here until I had solid numbers because otherwise we're just doing budget amendments. And they've got some deadlines to meet and they don't meet them, then we're going to list it We'll talk about them, but we'll punt. I just told them you're gonna you're gonna have to wait a year and, and be part of the, the budget, you know, the mid-year budget review yeah. if you can't get us good numbers. And so they're working on it, but you know, I don't think we're gonna have some of it by Friday. One is the Vactor truck is on its last leg, and we're evaluating the, the Vactor truck they want is five hundred thousand dollars. There's one on the state bid list that we think is adequate for three hundred thousand um, dollars they've got to justify you know if, if it's going to why five the other piece of it is we initially had a so we went that so they had a five hundred thousand we said no way well we can fix the current one for less than a hundred thousand and uh, we said okay that sounds reasonable because initially they were telling me the cab and chassis is fine it's the the equipment that's bolted to it that sucks stuff up is is the problem. So then they're supposedly going to get this evaluated, and then the mechanic said, "Well, that thing, the suspension and drivetrain's so bad on it, we can't drive it on the freeway." Well, wait a minute, you just told me that you know. So I'm getting conflict. I, I need good information so that we can make a decision. Does it make sense to put a hundred thousand dollars in the current one? Or do we need to go to buy a three to five hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment, and why? And it's that'll get paid for from the uh, the enterprise funds. There's money to pay for it. We just need to manage those dollars responsibly, though. And I don't have good information to make a decision on that. There's a discussion in here. I funded the contracts to stick with contract services for the TV services. Currently, we TV to the tune of $200,000 a year TVing our sewer lines. We have a stormwater requirement to add 200 for the stormwater utility. It probably makes sense to buy our own piece of equipment and to hire our employee own employee, but I don't have a good number yet. And I don't wanna, you know, they, we can do a budget. If, if they get me a good number, it, it seems to make sense, but I gotta have good numbers for what this equipment's gonna cost and how we're gonna utilize this person. And so what we'll do, probably do is delay, if they, if they can't get us good numbers by the time we finish this budget provision process, we'll, we'll fund the contract aspect of it and do a budget amendment if it makes sense later and shift gears. We just won't run out in, in March and you know award that contract and get those people doing that work. We can probably wait till summer. So it could be the first quarter before we make a decision on that. Just so, more out of curiosity than anything else, um, if we were to go televise our stormwater, and I don't mm -hmm. have a good feel for how large the collection system is, but um, 
do you have any idea of how, how long it would take us to televise the whole thing? I don't. That's that's okay. that, that's, that's uh, part I, I, of the equation. Part of the equation. What what is it? How how much can this guy do? Can we meet our permit requirements with one FTE or not? I don't know. You know, there's you know, mm -hmm. I'm not getting. Part of it is they're overwhelmed and, and over there, and, and that's not completely acceptable to me you know we have a method we know we and we know we have a fixed cost we we can go to this route I gotta be able to demonstrate that we can do this better ourselves otherwise I can't make that recommendation not theoretical yeah there's a box van that they want I don't think that's gonna work out it's gotten really expensive like forty thousand dollars plus for this box van um, for the electrician he we can wait a couple years on his truck and then we're recommending an administrative vehicle. We, we want to look at our first electric car, uh, potentially, um, but they're more expensive. So there's a, a request in here to fund an administrative vehicle that we would all share. Um, we've got, I'm sharing right now in Thomas's car, and I'm probably using it half the time, um, as well as driving my own car. And we've hired another engineer that's gonna need to be out in the field. I can't be in their car anymore. It's, there's just not gonna be time available. And then finance and other folks have needs to go to conferences or things too. So, um, so that's that's the ER and our fund, and what you we'll talk about more on Friday. Do we want to grab some pizza? And yeah, we can take a break here, and then you guys can kind of keep looking. If you have questions specifically, I'll we'll make sure you guys are comfortable with what we're doing. Yeah, so far um, looks good. Yeah, and I'll talk a little bit more about what's in purple, and then what's on the back, and then we'll get to this this other sheet. Well, we can just it take does. It does. <coughs> You could sit here and recite everything that we've already covered. <laughs> I'll just start over. Yeah. So we're, we were on the adjustments here on the on this page. Yeah. And so we, we so jumped, jumped off. Yeah, we've kind of jumped around, but that's okay. Uh, um, as far as the the budget book, I want to point out we've covered kind of two major sections: the capital and the ER and R. There is a debt section, uh, which we've kind of uh, changed a little bit this year. Um, so I'll ask you to look at page seventy-five. Again, this is in support of the council's goals to be transparent, make it easier to see, easier to follow. Uh, we create a summary section at the top here of our current debt obligations with the detailed uh, expenses below. So just slightly different. Uh, we want to help the council understand what we have currently obligated. And there are a few uh, debt that we have a little section here called new debt. Uh, these are loans that we have engaged with but haven't drawn on yet. Um, one is the Well 13, which we expect a lot of work to come forward. So far we've only drawn on $1.5 million of outstanding, so that's where you see the outstanding principal amount. Over the next two years we expect to fully draw on that loan and uh, you'll see we'll have a $6, .6 million outstanding principal balance at the conclusion of uh, this biennial period. And I'm reading this that this is the last year we have to pay on the building? For the city hall, correct. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So we eliminate some debt and add a lot more. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, that's like a check mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it yeah. needs almost it's as much as repairs as it costs to build it. Though. Burn the mortgage. Uh, but, uh, we've got some money to, in the, in the, the uh, mid-year review on the city hall to, to draw up specs for the things that we know and hopefully go out to bid in the next biennium to, to do Does our new engineer know how to do buildings? I'm not the new one, no. Mm -hmm. it does how to do roads. So we have to hire somebody. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a good case study. Well, there's a good argument out there right now. People just wanting to rent houses, not buy them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to point in the section just because that covers three of the sections and then we're really just in the uh, department budget sections, which is kind of nice. Um, so I jump back. Let's here. jump back. Yep. Yeah. And we'll keep jumping back and forth to the book to get ourselves familiar About with it. Two thirds of the way down in the transportation investments. One of the things we have a requirement on the Lund Bridge, and it's a significant one this year. It's about four hundred thousand dollars, is I believe was the number uh, that uh, we have to do an inspection and then some known repairs. What bridge? Uh, the Lund Bridge, the old Jack Creek. Tremont, yeah, Tremont to Lund Bridge. Um, 
That's Do you know what the repairs are? Mark does, and Mark when we didn't, Mark Noah didn't fund it initially, and that was the one Mark came into the meeting and said this has to happen. It's you know it's yeah, part I of the work plan that we have to do do this <laughs> annual inspections and last year's inspections to identify the work that we do the the following year. That's the same way with the TV. We TV and then we identify the repairs for the the next work plan. Um, so Mark can speak to that. Uh, it, it was a significant amount of money going out of the general fund of the general in the street fund. Um, fire same way next line item, you know reservoir cleaning fire hydrants program. We just we need to fund we need to fund those things. And then um, I didn't fund that TV, that next line item the TV truck the contracts or the the, the C, CTV contracts are in this budget, uh, which is the historical That's what you were practice. talking about, the analysis. <laughs> yeah, so it's funded to do the contract work, and if Public Works can demonstrate the, the true costs and the work plan, then I'm supportive of shifting to, to us doing that in-house. So that's for both of those, the sewer and the One sewer and one storm, that's right. And so those are, those are all the adjustments that I made. And on the back page, we've got a list of things for mid-year review. And on Friday, we'll come with costs uh, for those so in case there's anything that you want to prioritize. Um, the court's records management system, we already talked about that. The, the chief thinks the jail, there's, a, there's an increase again to the Kent County's bed, uh, about a 20% increase to the uh, bed cost up there. We're utilizing forks. We're investigating uh, Yakima. They sent yeah, us some like information. Um, looks pretty good. It's the transport. So they're going to come pick them up. They won't bring them back. And we don't have, we think we can just buy them a bus ticket. <laughs> We're not sure. We're investigating how do we, we, we know we can't leave them in Yakima as much as we'd like to. So. Um, um, there's a, I don't know that we're going to do any bond debt, but there's a, the next one, the DCD Climate, climate Resiliency Study, it's roughly $10,000 and we would partner with the county and it's a, it's a, it would affect our uh, bond uh, rating if we don't have one of these studies done. What the hell is it? It's the effect of climate change. It's oh, yeah, it's some requirement of. Is this going to affect our flood insurance or? <clears throat> I don't think so. It's just it, it it affects. It's part of your bond rating now, and uh, the county's going to do this next year, or in the in this biennium. No, they they'd be next year because they don't do a biennial budget. So we huh. we might want to consider this. I don't know that we're going to borrow any money. Maybe you know, and it'd be more expensive for us to do it on our own. Um, so uh, Nick, no, he, Nick won't be there Friday. So I mean, that, that's it has to do with our bond <clears throat> rating, and it would affect I, how much it would affect our rating and the pricing. I don't know, um, but it is one of the requirements for a bond rating now. For this resiliency. Well, it's like you say, there's there's no immediate plans for borrowing. So right. So that's why it's on this list versus funded. Because I thought, you know, I don't think we're going to borrow any. You know, and last time we did a, a, a private placement, we didn't even go completely through the process. Uh, so and if we did have some borrowings, they'd be minimal, like City Hall or a, a shortage on the um, Marina We'd probably spend more on the study than we would save on pondering. We yeah, might, we might drop so. you from AAA to AA. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So anyway, so, yeah. It, it isn't funded, so that's, yeah. it's, that's why it's on rates are probably more... Uh, um, <laughs> Nick's talked to some of you a little bit about the land use modeling that was at his in his staff report. Um, he hasn't fully developed a cost on that, um, but he thinks that could be worth pursuing, uh, you know, so that we're maximizing our land use, and that could be something we fund in the in a mid-year review. Um, but he plans doesn't know the cost. Uh, he didn't. It's just something he just learned about at a conference. Okay. Um, the land use revenue modeling? Yeah. The next <coughs> one was the public, the, the specs and plans for City Hall repair. Um, it's $15,000 for the China, 
the chimes are, I think, dead right now, other than manual <coughs> operation. Uh, my wife commented on it. She goes, I don't hear the clock tower anymore. Isn't there just a, a modern digital solution where you buy 15,000 bucks? To, Come the, on. Well, it's a sound system up there on the clock tower and the speakers. The, this thing is the size of I a. I know, yard it out. Just yeah. go down to Best Buy and buy a receiver and a speaker and Bluetooth think and you're done. I don't think it's that simple. But you're more than welcome to. Anyway, the, the, this, we got a quote for. And then we'll, what we paid for the original one when mm -hmm. we built right. this thing was quite right. a bit of money. Yeah. Right. So, I've, what I've been told is fifteen thousand bucks to replace it. It's not funded, and if we want to consider that, the only like for tra the chimes the, and lights ceremony, we're going to have somebody up there push right. a button. We can make it work if we push a button. It's right. just it's outdated technology, right. Right. and it's it's on its last leg. Um, the marina park, uh, what we part of our problem with the. Um, the Rockwell Park is. We went and asked for money, but we didn't know we fully understand what we needed. If we're going to move forward with the Marina Park, we need to have a hundred percent or a ninety percent design so that we can refine our ask uh, to the legislature, so that we're not having to come up with a difference because we said, "Yeah, we're going to go do this," but we really didn't know what it was going to cost. So, for. Thirty to fifty thousand dollars, we can get to a hundred percent design, and so that's on the list to consider. Um, we've got the new get trash cans. Merchants really appreciate them, but we could use some more downtown. Those were about five grand, and we've got about five thousand dollars for the trees coming on on the uh, on Halloween. Matter of fact, they're going to be delivered to Clayton Park. There's four oak trees going in Clayton Park, and eight street trees going in front of the park. So, so I finally got the street tree project done before the end of the year, uh, and we kind of had to wait for this fall type weather to to plant those. Um, we really squeezed Mark on his thermoplasty and striping, and we just said we funded some of it in the current biennial uh, first half, and we would reconsider in the second half if we can afford to do more. We need to do more of it. Um, and the, the thermoplasty is worn out there, but we just we had to squeeze something. Um, Thomas would really like to reconfigure the workspace where the employees are at the public workshop. It's really inefficient, the desk space, and there was a request in there to 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 do that so we can use that space more e efficiently. Uh, it just it was going to come out of funds we didn't have. So, and then the the, C, the TV truck is there. Um, we went through a process with AWC, we joined the GIS consortium mm -hmm. and they gave us a, uh, a, a work plan mm -hmm. and uh, we haven't even really opened the cover on it yet telling us what. What we do know is we have some data entry things that, we, that need to be accomplished that skilled work we might be able to work with, AW, with AWC's consortium to do that work for us because those guys don't have the time to do it. it doesn't, we'd be wasting our money buying the so new software that they want because <coughs> our data isn't current. Um, yeah, so I'll just touch on just a little bit. So if you guys recall, in this current biennial budget, uh, Public Works had pushed for some GIS and asset management software. <coughs> and we got up to the point where they were ready to go out and we were talking with them about our software and talking about we should really be integrated. We need to have an integrated system, single platform. How is it going to talk to ours? You know, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, as we kind of engaged in those conversations, it wasn't really clear they knew what they were really asking for. And so, Rob being on the board at AWC, uh, we discovered AWC has this program related to GIS services and doing some consulting. So we talked to them. It was like $2,500 to uh, enter into a contract with AWC. Uh, and what they did is they send out one of their GIS specialists that they contract with to come do a needs assessment for the city. They sat down with us and the staff, um, spent a good two hours with us, gathered data, gathered about our processes, about what we have, where is our GIS data, everything they could possibly ask to do a needs assessment. And they wrote this 10-page report that says, okay, this is your current state, this is where you guys want to go, and here's how you can get there. I felt that was really important that we actually have a plan to get where we needed to go rather than jump to the end and try to reverse engineer this thing. So we have a plan now um, 
and recommendations of how we can get there. It's going to cost some money um, because there are we only have one GIS guy right now, Darren, who runs around doing stuff. So part of our city's issue is we don't have the human resources to actually pull boxes down out of the attic, scan them in, map things out, um, that part of the work. And there's also uh, work that's in the GIS system, configuring it and, and mapping it with the planning department. So there were some efficiencies we identified that we could do internally now uh, that would help our JS platform work better. And there are some things that we might need to talk to the mayor and council about, about seeking some maybe consultants to come in on a contract to get this kind of uh, real push for low dollars to get some da good data in. What I took away from the whole report was you really need to focus on getting your JS system good data in and your process mapped out and your plan before you ever jump to an asset management software system. That all funnels in and out of it, but if this is garbage, you won't ever be able to use it. So that was real important because an asset management software system isn't cheap. It's in the order of thirty to hundred thousand dollars. So I'm glad we were able to take a moment and pause, rethink the plan, work with AWC, get a roadmap of how to get to where we're going. And over this next biennial period, I think what you'll see is we'll come forward and and make a request that hey, here's what they recommended we do. We like to do this too because it actually moves us forward um, at a steady pace to get work to where we need to go. And, and probably in the next biennium, we'll get them the software they need, but the software doesn't do any good if we don't have good data in the software. Right. Yeah, you gotta have good data in the software, you have to have people operate the software and know how to use it, um, and then and you have to it. <coughs> maintain it, and then you have to train your field crews on how they're interacting with um, your utilities and providing the information. So there's a whole body of work that needs to be done um, in the future. But first, we need to focus on the GIS side and get that cleaned up before we can move on. A couple more in here and then we'll jump into numbers here. So <clears throat> I talked about the administrative vehicle. We're still not sure you know, what that would look like, um, but we're, we're asking that you fund some dollars in the, the budget. And since that's a new, uh, you know, per that policy, I didn't feel it was appropriate for me to put that into the mayor's budget you guys on, on Friday, if you're supportive of that, would need to, to make that adjustment. So have you, you, you said going to electric, have you looked at anything or considered It's anything? probably going to be a, a leaf or a bolt, uh, one of the two. Kia's got one out there, but it doesn't have the it barely 100 miles range. Um, the bolt is about the best range. Um, it's just, there's a premium on that. So we might put those dollars in there. Um, we just, gotta, we just haven't had an opportunity in the last two weeks to truly evaluate what, what the best thing for the city is. Uh, I think we could get by with a, 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 a leaf, but I, I'm not. And we're gonna, what, what, what we do what's is. The, uh, your driving patterns, what? I'm gonna go to Olympia. Uh, I would think if I'm gonna go to a conference in Eastern Washington, I'm not gonna take that electric car, I'm gonna drive my own vehicle. And, and get reimbursed. It's, you know, I'm not going to have to want to worry about those, anything. And if I'm traveling anywhere here in Western Washington, I think I'd be fine taking that electric vehicle. And then we would put. But well, what's the majority of your your crowd? Um, around Kitsap County, down to Olympia. You know, a meet, the meetings for um, AWC aren't in downtown Seattle. They're out by the airport, so I've got to drive. Uh, for those, those are quarterly. Um, you know, in the legislative session, the expectation that I'm going to be down on Olympia a bit, um, you know, with this board position. So, uh, and then, you know, it's NOAA staff or other administrative folks. You know, primarily though, it would be me. And then we would put the, some. The reason, you know, you can get like the uh, the fusion plug-in mm -hmm. hybrid that. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the first X number of miles, you're totally on batteries, and then when your charge drops, your gas engine comes on. But if the majority of your driving mm -hmm. is in kids, I just like for me, I go to Bramwood and back, and I never use gas. Mm -hmm. It's completely electric. Uh, now, if I drive to Olympia, I yeah. won't make it down there and back before the gas engine comes on, but I still have that ability. And that, that leaf is just barely there. On a round trip, and, but the the bolt definitely. The bolt is my my neighbor yeah. just 
yeah. set a bolt now for a few months yeah. and absolutely loves it. DOT yeah. has yeah. a number of bolts in their fleet too. And they, they We're going to need to put, you know, probably five thousand dollars into <clears throat> the charging station over here in the gravel parking lot. There's a power pole and a transformer on the pole. We would just put a charging station in. I, I think that's where we're going to be headed and that's where oh, we can easily put the infrastructure is right there versus cutting up a parking lot down here and there's no room in the police parking lot anyway for to get another vehicle in down here yeah. i think we can do it up here in the it, we're, we're exploring that for ten thousand dollars less we can get another escape and that could be an option too is but we're mandated by the state to at least look well, at it and, and, you know you look at the life of the vehicle and compare it you know what mm -hmm. the electric is it's you you pay for it up front mm -hmm. but if you're going to have it for any length of time it's cheaper well yeah. and we're get, realistically running around town you know around Kitsap County this is we're going to have this thing 15 years easy and, yeah. and look at I mean we're getting rid of vehicles 20 years old right now mm -hmm. so. yeah I, I would think you're smarter to go all electric personally yeah and that's it's just the dollars we're just yeah, it's, it's the upfront well, that you can you take with. advantage of some of these zero percent interest over sixty months, where you don't have to come out of pocket with everything and you're replenishing. We've your got the money in our ER and our fund. We we can pay for it. It's just, is but that you know, the best use of our time? <clears throat> I'm not sure how it works with with the city, but there are folks like you know doing a lease. You get the it won't apply to the city, but you as an individual, you get this huge yeah. tax credit when you buy it. But if you lease it, they take that tax credit into consideration and lower your lease payments. So it would be worth at least looking at a lease instead of a, a non rate purchase, just because uh, yeah. you get the advantage of that. I, th tax I think credit. I think what I heard Rob really <coughs> want is he wanted to throw out, hey, admin vehicle. Yeah, I, I guess support of that in its I got concept. Into weeds. concept. Yeah, and, and and I think when you get into the dollars and cents. I think there is some merit to financing some of this stuff. I don't think we have. I mean, I don't think we have to do it all with cash. Even though I'm planning that, budgeting that, I think there is a room in the ER portfolio to do some with debt. Um, it would help with that large front upfront cash right. payment. Mm -hmm. You amortize over time. Yeah. You kind of level off your replacement plan, plan structure. So I think there's some room for that. We built that into the policies. Um, we haven't kind of explored that uh, yet. So I think that's something we'd come back to. Hey, we're exploring this concept. Are you guys comfortable with us going this route with these type of vehicles? Right. Or I mean, maybe it's the seven here. You know, I mean, we can start playing with that if we get into the conversation on the cash side. Well, what's the best use of our cash? What's the cost of borrowing? Uh, what's our options? So I think there's room for it. Yeah. But I think what we were get on the list, right. everyone take a look at, see how they feel about it, because yeah. um, it is the first time we guess we have an admin vehicle here which is kind of unique I think to most entities most entities have an admin vehicle. We had vehicle. one years ago. So oh do we okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a leftover police car though. No. No? No we had a a great big Ford station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago. <laughs> That's longer than I was around. Um, and then there's some because they're new equipment purchases there's some a handful of miscellaneous things. It's less than ten thousand dollars. I'm supportive of it. It's um, a counterbalance for the the uh, Bobcat, so that they can lift heavier things. Uh, it's it's um, we. That's your pay management, right? Yeah. So it's it's <laughs> it, it, that's your job. Yeah. So, but because of our policy, <coughs> I need to throw it on the list. So so then we jump to this, and I'll let Noah walk. Walk you yeah. guys through this. So I think report. what we want to do is we want to. You have one back. Make sure you got one. I do. Okay. Uh, what you have here is a summary of all our funds, uh, beginning fund balance from left to right. The beginning fund balance, uh, the revenues we're budgeting is received, the expenses going out, our ending fund balance, and then you have the mayor's adjustments column, and now an adjusted ending fund balance. On the very far right, you have a funding balance target. Um, so this is per policy, per kind of target goals. Some of these we'll come back to, so just give me a second. But I wanted to have a fund balance target. How much cash do we need? Do we have a policy that we are supposed to be adhering to? All these kind of things. Uh, so when we look at how we built this budget, including the marriage adjustments, uh, we're really looking at this adjusted ending fund balance column all the way through. Um, again, you see the, the biennial target on the right. And, and on the revenue side, initially NOAA was at one and a half a year on sales tax growth. 
I took it to two. Uh, we're being very conservative, uh, and <coughs> that's how we got some of this because we didn't have any fund balance left uh, if, if we hadn't taken it to two. But I still think two is is conservative and doable. Yeah, I think I think where we started, um, and I don't want to use conservative because I was. We were really starting this budget with having a lot of upside potential, meaning that we're not overly ambitious on our revenues, and we're not we're trying to take a fair approach to our expenses. Some call it conservative. I call it budgeting for an upside potential, rather than the down and minimizing your downside. And risk. so, this beginning fund balance is what you're anticipating it will be on January first. Correct. Yes. And what the city has done traditionally is once we've closed out the year, we will come in first quarter and true it up, and that will really give us some. Um, better information. Stabilization fund, matter of fact, is about if you looked at your report you got tonight, was a few thousand higher than that already. Because then Rebecca, I said, Well, how? We don't have, you know, we, she said it's the uh, investment uh, income is coming in higher uh, because of rising interest rates. So we'll, we'll go for we'll that in the first quarter and true up. Um, so I guess the couple funds that only really jump out to me are the first two, the current expense, which is substantially below our target. Again, these are biennial targets, biennial numbers. Um, the other one is the city street, uh, substantially below our target. Um, however, I'll counter that with, we're continuing to commit to funding our stabilization. So when times are good, you wanna set some money aside to uh, those were reserve funds. So you see that we are budgeting $400,000 to the stabilization count, um, which is a good policy to grow. Although it's still below our target, we're making progress towards it. 10 years ago when John and I first got on the council or on the finance committee, um, we didn't have a stabilization count and we didn't have any targets. We were managing cash pretty much. And what is the target ongoing? Three One months, point is three end. months, isn't it? I think it's three months. Three, three months, months, three months. Which would be approximately what? Well, that's what the target is here at yeah, 1.8. 1. 1. Well, is that the end game, or is that just as we're continuing to ramp up to reach the end goal? Well, the, 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 well, the end goal is going to continue to grow every year. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. But yeah. if we start from zero, you've got to take, take yeah. time yeah. to no, get it to that. Yeah, we started at zero, and we're right. at 1.3 now. In, <coughs> right. Since Alan Mark. What do you think today, what do you think three months would look like? It's this top. It's the you think big, it would be 1.8? It's the, uh, we still the, the, one, the into it? one two million is an annualized. No, that's three months right there. The one two, or the one three. The what we want the general fund to be at right there. That target. Stabilization. No, stabilization is more than that. It's it must be four because it's larger than the the top one. I'll, I'll pull the policy. Yeah, um, so you can have that. It's like. Yeah, and eventually we're going to catch up, and then we're just yeah, going to have to grow just do by the annual. Yeah, yeah that's that's the correct. Wonder how close yeah. we are to reaching that equilibrium. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was my question. We're yeah. at this pace, two biennials away, so yeah. twenty twenty six maybe. We'll have it fully funded, other than the the increase. Right. And then you're right. Once you get there, then it's good. It's just real incremental yeah. adjustments, not yeah. not big dollars right. yeah, by, by any means. Um, but I believe the top two numbers, the, the street and the current expense fund, we're looking for three months there, and then there's a different policy on the stabilization, stabilization which I think is an, another month, I believe. And then the others are just really, um, they're not things that, you know, they're, they're, there's different type of accounts, so we, can, we don't have a stabilization. Yeah. So I wanna talk about the current expense, because I know this made me and the mayor really uncomfortable when we first saw these numbers. And again, part of this is we talk about strategies because this is all cash. When can you move cash? How you play this out? Um, a big hit to the general fund and current street is the ENRR. If you look at the replacement mm -hmm. payments going in. So that is a big hit. So we've talked about um, the timing of those payments and transfers. A hey, first, get in the first quarter, truing up the numbers, knowing we're out with real revenues. Um, laying out a sustainable transfer plan over the next volume to get to our replacement dollars. If that's the right way to get to the million. To get yeah. to the million, right. No. Uh, no. The other 2.6. The other 2.7. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's, oh, yes. Yes. that's, that's an area where yeah. if the economy goes to hell and we just 
we may not have the luxury to fund that. And you know, we've never done it before. It, if things got really is, bad, can you reverse it? You can't reverse it. That's why it's important to yeah. time the transfers. Yeah. So this is where we said, okay, mm -hmm. it's a biome budget, that's great. That gives us time so we could talk about making these transfers quarterly, every six months. The only thing we really need to make sure on the transfer side is that when we purchase these vehicles out of the ENR, we actually have the cash to do that. Right, and you in have the to. So, so we'll make those transfers to make sure that we have the funds to do that. Which is the 500 Correct. Yes. Correct. That's where some financing, if the interest rates right. were at zero percent, might help Correct. you manage yeah. cash. Correct. <coughs> That's where I say there could be yep. a role for debt to play That's here to help either. smooth this out. Um, but again, I wanted to take a kind of, you know, this approach to say, hey, worst case, if we deal with this, what does it look like? Well, okay, it's, it's not pretty, but there are some strategies we can manage around this um, to bolster the fund balance. And then down below, we, you know, we break all of those enterprise funds out, which yeah, we didn't before. Let's start go down below, yeah. Um, I'm looking at the REIT and the impact fees. Yes. How come we have those big balances? Ah, great question. Because so, we, because we op we, we're not we're not budgeting, it. we're obligating it. Okay. Um, yes. I mean, that's that's the short end of it. We're not putting it. We're not putting these expenses in the budget because we just need to be aware there. so are yeah, we, we need to be aware we are making all of council aware we can we can approach this however you guys want to approach this well I'm I, I don't your want yeah. other council to see these balances and think there's money yeah. there. well I think yeah. you start the way you started today right yeah, right that, yeah. that other you start want here. that other report that REIT report that the REIT shows report you. that shows what's been obligated it's already been obligated, been obligated. <laughs> right yeah okay. we yeah. can't spend it twice right right yeah, that's that's the important message. Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, they look like really good balances, but we know we got some things coming up, right? Um, that aren't on the budget yet. So what is that? One oh seven. What is community events? Um, bum, bum, bum. Is that the LTAC fund? It's the LTAC fund. That was my question. Yeah, yeah. it's the two hundred. It's a hundred a year. Yeah, and what do we have in there as a place for it? You're, so. you're anticipating that there's going to be 52000 to start with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Becca, I haven't looked at the LTAC fund since I really generally did this. Right. And I haven't done it since our last conversation, so I'm making a note to revisit that. I well, just I'm just waiting for sure council feedback also on the expense side of what accurate. you guys want to do. Yeah, you weren't there. Yeah. yeah previously, we were projecting 80000 Yeah, it looks like the being finance is less than what. All right, we're going to have to come back to look at that one. Yeah, because I think that being fund balance should be higher. But we're also budgeting on a biennial basis. Right. So we're still waiting for right. direction of what you guys want to do. Um, worst case is, if it's the 95, I think we talked about before, then you're bolstering your ending fund balance by 40,000 to get back up to 70,000. <coughs> because on, on this report, we're we have in here 52,000 beginning fund balance with 200,000, 100,000 revenue. Oh, so, if it, so if it were 90,000. Yeah, I'm saying it, 95. It, yeah, right. we were just talking about 95,000. So I think when I put this number, it was, it was before Four. we took a harder look at it okay. um, a few months ago. So you would see a, an uptick in your ending fund balance. Beginning and ending. Yeah. If, if, yeah. if we approve the 100. Yeah. And then we received 100 each year. Right. And actually, you've got 224, yeah, 400 in expenditure. So, did we capture the what they were talking about doing? Well, no, we because we're waiting for the final. Okay. You know, so we had this. You got to look at that one again. Though. Yeah. Well, before we get this to the final budget, we knew right. we were going to adjust based on what right. council right. and the Tech community did. So we'll true up this right. um, particular category. And I wasn't particularly concerned because the revenues and expenses are about right. what we were talking about. We we're ending with a balance, right. starting with a balance, and then we'd true it up.
I mean, again, you see the criminal justice really um, gets depleted, begins with 441,000 and ends with 23,000. Again, a big chunk of that is for the money going to EIR for police vehicles, and the other chunk is for the uh, records management system. And we're about five years out, uh, needing about 150 or so in that fund for new computers. Out of curiosity, do you yeah. know in 2017 and 18, we'll replace yeah. them again. what these revenues look like, or is it not necessarily apples to apples because you got bond proceeds and stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, we have an idea. Yeah, for most of the funds, we could make that direct comparison. Yeah, I'm just curious, um, you know, what our this budget that we're just drawn yeah. to a close, what's kind of the estimated revenues over the last two years and some oh. expenses as compared to what this is reflecting. Right. Mm -hmm. Is this a 3% increase? Is right. It no, I like percent that. increase? Yeah. yeah. The, I'll, I'll, I'll and then that. pulling out any revenues that are like a bond proceed. It's a yeah. one time. Yeah. Net yeah. that out. Yeah. Yep. So that criminal justice, so it's up to us to decide if we think that that 24,000 ending balance is appropriate for criminal justice yeah yeah we don't know any of other expenditure we know a long range that right there's so something out to, yes, right so we need to start saving a little bit yeah um mm -hmm. you know on that number you know that probably about works so the other thing that's years. not in this and i don't know whether i should say anything else about, but we may have some obligations from outside agencies that we're mm. not looking at at all in here. We could. And I don't know how we'll get funded. Yeah, I, I don't think we can. I guess we need to wait and see what that's going to look like. Right. We can sit here and wring our hands, but until we know yeah, the no. whole picture, it's hard to say. Yeah. No, but again, I'm going back kind of to this REIT and the right, impact fees. Right, right. You've got to keep that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would hate yeah. to see our entire stabilization fund go to that. Yeah, because that's that that's and our where, general fund are the only two eligible right. sources to, to right. take care of that problem. Yeah. Yeah. And that's. Well, the auditors say we can't do that, deplete that fund. Right? We shouldn't. Right. It's not. Well, we wouldn't necessarily yeah, deplete we it, but, we can. but right. if we had to enter into some sort of payment obligation for that, yeah. and we did like 500000 a year, right. you know, over four years, we... That's, that's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, there's so many variables in that discussion. Mm -hmm. just, I, I think it's going to be, it's gonna be a negotiation, and it's yeah. going to be the threat of litigation, and... Yeah. Oh, it's not going to be pretty. It won't be pretty, and it'll harm our relationship. I'm doing a pretty good job of that by myself. <laughs> I try to play the good cop. <coughs> so the and negotiations will be with. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I mean it, it, it appears what we got asked for would be a bargain comparison to. But once again, that's just kicking the can down the road. It's not solving, solving the underlying problem. There's a, there's a fundamental problem. So the next section, so the governmental funds, uh, I guess if there were two flags I'd have on here as far as fund balance goes, it would be the general fund and city street fund. Those are low balances. Um, again, the mayor was trying to, in his adjustments, fund the requests. On the city street side, we're actually funding what's required with this bridge project. So that was a big chunk of that. Um, kind of ate up any dollars we had for paving. license tabs going to city street? Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. But we did fund, like I say, to, to in, in the first half of the biennium, put some put some uh, designs together so that we can hopefully pay one or two of those projects right. when we yeah. review it mid, mid biennium. Yeah. I, I think for me, that's probably our one of our first priorities for general fund dollars. Yeah. Yep. And again, I, th I think what's important on the summer sheet is I'm going to keep pushing this message that we are doing a lot in transportation maintenance and preservation oh, operations. Right. 
because we're spending $3.6 million right. on right. the city wide. So we got bridge repairs, street striping, right. potholes, pavement repairs, sidewalks, street lighting, truck. Yeah. It's probably not up to the degree we'd like to see, <coughs> but we also have an 18 to $20 million right. major right. transportation project right. on the capital side. Right. So we are putting a lot of tra uh, money into transportation here in the city. Yeah. On the enterprise side, I want to point this out because now you can see the layout of the different funds. Mm -hmm. You have your water operations, stabilization, debt service, um, and we have right now the capitals tucked down here in the capital section, so we'll come back to that. Um, but this is something I want to come back to this committee in 2019 is we don't have established policies for our stabilization fund, enterprise funds. So I'd like to come back. What I'd like to do is establish the accounts um, through an ordinance next week saying, hey, now we have, we like this account structure. We generally want to go this way. I put in some target dollars in here as far as what our biennial target policy might look like um, just to help shape um, some comparisons uh, of whether we're doing the right things. So I'd like to come back to this committee in 2019, talk about all those policies for our enterprise funds, but actually establish them now, establish the budget start at these kind of target levels. And we're trying to be very uh, uh, um, transparent, but um, what's the word? Consistent. Consistency across our funds. So if it's you know uh, 60 days of working capital, that's kind of what our target is, our measuring stick. Right. Um, but you can see it actually starts to help flush out now between water operations, sewer operations, uh, and storm, and how much we're, we're spending investing. The other question you might have is why don't any of these funds have any be any fund balance in it? Okay. So how this is actually going to work is we have the one fund 401 currently that has the water operations, capital, sewer, all in that. We're going to close 2018 with that fund as a part of this budget process and through an ordinance next week I'm going to request that we create these accounts and fund them beginning 2019. So there's a clean break 401 through the end of 18. Starting 2019 we have the new account structure. So we can have that crosswalk as we uh, move to this more transparent style. So the reason these don't have any beginning fund balances is because I don't budget any transfers to occur until right. 2019. Um, yep. And they wouldn't be classified as beginning fund balance, they'd be classified as a transfer in from 401 to the new account and it's going to be in fund balance. So that's one. And what's the sum of 401 right now? Uh, fund balance? Yeah. If you look at it, where is that? It's on the second one. There you go. Okay. 401 or 4.16. That will get split amongst. Yeah, so what we are anticipating is, you know, once we close 401, uh, we are trying to use a best practice to understand how much of that is sewer, how okay. much of that is water and we'll make the proper uh, allocation yep. to the various funds through that transfer mechanism. Um, and so that's why you actually see revenues in, well, actually you don't see here, but if you were looking at this from a 1920, you'd see a big bump in revenues in 19, and then 20 drops off. So right. there's a large transfer in for fund balance, yeah. establishing the account. Right. Um, but going forward, this will make it a lot easier to talk about water operations, sewer operations, uh, so just to be clear, that 4.6 is, is included in yes, the revenues. Yes, it's in the revenue. Yes. Great. Yeah. Yep. yep. It's not a fund balance yet. It's not a fund balance yep. yet. Yep. yep. And, and we discussed this. This seemed to be the cleanest break. Okay. And you can see that, you know, when we talk about the water operations, our adjusted after our, uh, our mayor's adjustments, healthy balance compared to our target, uh, stabilization, uh, you know, uh, healthy on balance target. compared to our target actually is more so I, as we probably went through this budget process I was updating expenses and revenues and probably didn't go back and update uh, the transfers for stabilization so when we get to the final budget we'll get those numbers to be tied up if it's over then of course it's going to reduce it down because uh, we won't need that So the, the, the enterprise funds actually looked very nice, very healthy. Sewer operations is the only one that's kind of below its target right now. Oh, I'm glad I caught that. So if you look at the sewer and the storm operations, um, storm actually has a healthy balance compared <coughs> to its target. Sewer is below the target. However, I want you guys to recall the CCTV discussion where we have budgeted 
a contract in sewer and a contract in storm, and we're discussing buying a truck and having an employee actually do that work. So it's budgeted at $400,000 a year per fund. Not um, quite, but it's, it's that 443 and the 370, I believe. Those are because uh, I funded those contracts. I don't believe they were in the. But it's eight hundred. Okay. It's eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, eight hundred thousand between the two. Uh, so that's that. So I guess when I saw the balance, I oh man, we're half of our target, and then I recalled, well, well, we still have this discussion on the table of do we TV these through contracts or do we purchase a truck and hire an employee? We're almost double counting this at this time in a certain way because if it's if there's some cost savings buying the truck and employing the person, um, then you would see these fund balances bounce so back. Quick up. question, just as we discussed, the 4.6 is included in these revenues? Yeah. Is the 4.6 also included in the expenses to be able to create the beginning fund balances? Uh, say that one more time. So if the revenues are anticipating the 4.6 from this transfer, yeah. right? And then from the revenues, we're gonna create a fund balance. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be an expense? Uh, no. Because if not, you're gonna have this num these numbers are going to be off. Wouldn't this number be off by 4.6 million in your it, chart here? The, the number is not actually 4.6. We, we did a forecast what we'll think we'll close 18. So it's closer to, I think, 1.4 each fund, 1.4 million each fund. Um, no, no, that's just the sum of the sum of it all. Right, 401 is currently at 4. Point, I'm sorry, 4.1, not 4.6. Yeah, so call it 4 million. And that's in revenues. And so we'd split 2 million and 2 million. For simplicity, say we did a 50 50 split water sewer, two mm -hmm. million transfer going in to sewer yep. or transfer going to water. Mm -hmm. That's only on the revenue side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not on the expense side. So. Right, but but if it's in revenues, mm -hmm. and then when, but eventually we're going to populate this column with it. Yeah, part of the mid year review. So I'm, just like, I'm just wondering how your spreadsheet is totaling things, right? Because if we went and added $2 million to Storm. If wouldn't it wouldn't change your ending balance by two million. No, what it, what it would do is you'd put, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think so. If you took the two million dollars out of revenue, mm -hmm. you plopped it here, you'd have two million here, five million here, yep. you'd still have your ending the same. Yep. No impact. Right. But since you haven't done that, and if we're gonna put two million here. It, it will it, okay. It's actually, See what I'm it, saying? it won't show up that way because I have to actually uh, have to do an activity, I have to make a transfer in. It won't be recorded as being in fund balance, it'll be recorded as a transfer in. And then at some point during the year, all of a sudden, you will have a fund balance, but it won't be a, at the beginning of the budget. Right. So if we re-amended the budget sure. after first quarter, for example, <coughs> after first quarter, we true all the balances, yeah, yeah that we're just you'll not. have some numbers in here, and the ending should be the same. Right. We need to uh, wrap this up since yeah. our oh, yeah. work study starts in 15 yep. minutes. So Sounds good. Any questions? No, great work. Any, so any far. questions? Yeah, well, no, I, I, very I, easy to read. Yeah, I, so you've got a, you've got I a have book. some questions when we get into here, just so that I make sure that I'm on the major adjustments yeah. detail. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. And we were going to dive into these deep on Friday. Yeah. yeah. And as well as I just want dollars to make sure on this. this. Hey, I appreciate the questions because there is, are a lot of files. So Excel. Sydney and Fred will be joining you on Friday. Oh, okay. And uh, Jay, Jay and yeah, Scott will get. Um, uh, a, a the Reader's Digest version. Set a two hour meeting on Wednesday. We're just recapping this stuff and the decisions you guys made so that they're up to speed when we get to the council meeting. Right. And everybody's Sounds got good. the same information. And uh, we'll bring this to Friday, this commute trip production program. Uh, we just got this today, too, and it probably needs a few hundred dollars. We ran it, we ran it, we're, we're current, ran out of money this month in the binding. Um, I think we're funding thousand dollars or so a year. Each employee's mm. eligible so for up to fifty dollars, um, and oh, okay. the benefits of it. So you'll get a memo about this right. on Friday too. All right. So we're going to adjourn the finance committee meeting. So it's adjourned. Adjourned.